So congratulations is in order. We have reached 800 subscribers. What's that mean to me? It means there are at least 800 people in the world that are interested in what I have to say about deer hunting, turkey hunting, and uh, experiencing life here in, here in uh, Florida. And Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman is, is happy to give, as our tradition, another copy of my book to the 10th emailer. You email me on Wednesday, that's November the 3rd, at Peter M. Updike at gmail.com and I will send you a free copy of my book, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman. This will be the only time that I mention the book, okay? I'm not really here to sell a book. I wrote it and I'm giving it away, okay? However, if you want to buy a copy of my book, you can go to Pat's Pawn and Gun, their website in Leesburg, Florida, click on publications, It'll come up, I think they're $15.95, and uh, in order one, and they'll send one right out to you. It'll be a signed copy of uh, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman. Now, what's the book about? It's about uh, life's journey uh, through the eyes of a, a, a small boy into a young man and beyond. Uh, airplanes fall out of, out of the sky and horses tumble down the mountain, and uh, they're all true life experiences experienced by me, okay? Um, I gave away a copy a uh, hundred subscribers ago, and uh, I gave a copy away to Jarrett. We're going to do a little uh, question and answer video, and we're going to do a little mail time. And I got a package in the mail from a subscriber who received one of my books. I'm going to show you what he sent me. He sent me a handmade, homemade, I don't know what you call it. I suppose it would be a primitive hand knife. And he made it himself and sent it to me. Apparently he makes these things. Jarrett, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's a little knife with a stone point and an antler handle wrapped with some sinew. And it's got a scabbard here made out of a rattlesnake hide. And uh, I guess you take this thing and you could tie it around your waist and... He saw my video and bought and uh, got a copy of my book, Wild Treasures and Outdoorsmen, and, and I sent him the book for free because he was the 10th tenth, the tenth person to email me. And he sent me this in response to that. I really appreciate it. I'm going to find a place here in uh, the Wild Treasures studio to, uh, to display it and to keep it. This is the first, this is the first gift I've ever gotten from a subscriber, and so it's going to have a special place here in the studio. Thank you, Jared. I really appreciate it. Let me show that to you one more time. It's pretty cool. Got the knife point there on the end of it. I like it. I like it a lot. So, um, Wednesday. This Wednesday, November the 3rd. Be the 10th emailer, and I'll send you a copy of my book, Wild Treasures of an Outdoors. All right, Q&A. I just got back from... Uh, Gothi Wildlife Management Area. I did a muzzleloader hunt at Gothi. I did it, uh, let's see, it was Friday. It rained all day Thursday, and Friday the temperatures dropped down into the 50s, and it rained on and off the whole time I was there. I, I suppose my muzzleloader probably got wet, but it was one of those dark, gloomy Florida days where you really enjoy it, and I really enjoyed it. It was a great time. I didn't see any deer. I didn't see any uh, notable sign. I didn't see any rubs. I didn't see any scrapes. Of course, it had been raining, so um, you're not going to see any scrapes uh, and tracks are all washed out. So uh, everywhere I walked, was there was three at least three inches of water on the ground everywhere I walked, so uh, made it a little difficult to hunt, but I got set up and uh, I hunted, I suppose, from seven in the morning till about one two o'clock in the afternoon before I started heading home and I did not see a deer. So that's the way it goes. I'm gonna go back. I also have a uh, modern gun quota permit for Gothi. So I'm gonna go back and, and do that hunt as well because I don't quit until the last day. All right, so um, that's my hunt. I've got to put my muzzle loader away, get it all unloaded and cleaned up. I've got the bolt out of it. I don't drive around with the bolt I don't take the cap off because it's so difficult to get it off. But uh, I got to get it.
broke down and cleaned up and put away and uh, get my get my rifle out. So uh, hopefully we'll see a deer. Okay, so Chris asks, if we're going to get in the question and answer uh, portion of the video, Chris asks, he lives, he lives in St. Augustine, and he wants to know, where should I start hunting in the Ocala National Forest? Well, if I lived in St. Augustine, I would love to hunt the swamp that's just south of Rodman Reservoir. I'd love to hunt that. Um, that's where I would start. That's where I would look. I would also hunt the scrub that meets the swamp, that little area in there where the, the terrain changes, where the habitat changes. That's what I would do. Um, he also asks, is, is there a tag system in Florida? He's not from Florida. He's moved here, and uh, he's a little confused about about some of the, the rules here and no there's not a tag system but you do have to report your kill what you'll need to do is you'll need to either download the app get it on your smartphone or go on the computer and report your harvest it'll be it's real simple to do if i can do it anybody can do it i just clicked on report a harvest I punched in my my customer id number and my name and information all came up and i just all they ask is just some simple questions about the deer you killed and uh, you can and you can report your harvest from there and um, yeah if uh, if I lived in st. Augustine the two places that I'd hunt would be Ocala and uh, the Lake Delancey unit maybe Salt Springs I'll maybe not go that far south I never want to drive further than where I, I can hunt what's that mean it means if I drove to Gothi and it takes me an hour and a half to get to Gothi in an hour and a half to get home that's three hours of driving time so I usually want to make sure that I can double that so I want to hunt six hours okay because I don't want to spend my time driving I want to spend my time hunting and uh, if you're not careful you end up spending more time driving than hunting and that's not good so uh, Caravel, Caravel Ranch is just north of the Ocala National Forest it's a quota hunt but uh, if I lived in St. Augustine I would hunt Caravel Ranch I would apply for a quota permit for that every year do an archery hunt there, muzzleloader hunt. Check the brochure. Okay, the brochure holds the key to all the rules and regulations. Both WMA uh, wildlife management areas are different. So they're going to have different rules, okay? You can't read the state regulations and apply it to Ocala or Caravel Ranch. Caravel Ranch has its own list of rules and regulations, as does Ocala, okay? But uh, those are the two management areas I would look at if I lived in St. Augustine. And uh, that's where I would start, okay? So um, a little pep talk here. I get a lot of questions, and I get a lot of folks ask me if I do any mentoring, if I do any guiding. And I know I understand that uh, a lot of folks they ask me a lot of questions about the bears in uh, the forest and uh, whether or not they should be a concern. And the only, the only real advice I get, if, if I tried to mentor or go hunting with everyone that asked me, it would leave no time for myself. It would leave no time for me to take my nephew. The only person I'm interested in, interested in mentoring is my nephew and, uh, and going hunting by myself, okay? But I really appreciate all of the people that ask if I would go with them and show them and, and lead them. But hunting is kind of a process. It's a process, a learning process. To be a, a true hunter is to be a solo hunter, to be able to learn to, to deal with and hunt circumstances and situations yourself. Um, I make the videos to help maybe pique your interest, maybe to help get you started. But, you know, when I was a youngster and I was going up to the Ocala National Forest by myself, there were times I just drove around. And I really never even got out of the truck. I was scared to death to get out of the truck. And it took a while for me to get accustomed to being alone in the woods. It took a while for me. And even now, still, I, you know, I get a little nervous when I pull off the hard road and I'm driving down a dark, a black, dark, wooded road and with, with you know, sandy potholes and and flooded roads and culverts and overhanging timber and it's it's a spooky it's a spooky atmosphere but you need to learn as i do to get over it that uh that's part of hunting if i were doing it all over again and 
and I wanted to learn how to hunt in a place that I'd never been before, I would just take it little steps, little baby steps. I would just pick out a block of woods that I wanted to hunt. And it really doesn't matter where it is, just as long as it's a place that you can access easily and that you can go to often. Uh, if it takes you an hour to go to the Ocala National Forest, I'd say that's ideal. Um, to hunt for one hour or two hours and then to go home would be you know, a simple undertaking. And do it as often as you could. Become familiar with the woods you're hunting. What happens is that you will build up a, a sense of boldness alone in the wilderness. And as the years go by, you'll, you'll come more and more acquainted with the habitat. You'll become more and more acquainted with the atmosphere of hunting alone and seeing people that you don't know and, and being able to overcome any fear or apprehension that you might have. Um, having someone go with you really doesn't help get you over that. The only way you can get over that is just to venture out on your own. Maybe take a drive. Maybe drive around a block of woods that you think that might be good to hunt and just park your truck and get out and walk around. Just look at tracks, look at sign, find access. Maybe go in 25 and 30 yards and set up your stand and still be able to see your truck. If that helps you get accustomed to hunting alone, well, that's what I would do really have no shame in what you do. Just get out there and get after it and give it a try. I'm here for you. If you all want to ask me any questions, you're welcome to email me at petermupdike at gmail.com. And uh, I'll answer the questions the best I can. They seem a little redundant, and it seems like some of the questions are the same over and over and over again. Where would I hunt? You just need to find a spot. You need to pick a spot and uh, expand your search from there and become familiar with it. If I could just take you out and show you, you know, then you wouldn't learn anything. You wouldn't, you wouldn't gain any wisdom. When you see a rub, when you see your first scrape, when you kill your first deer, it might be 10 years down the road. You'll kill a deer right at dark, right? And that deer will run off into the timber. You'll be by yourself. And you'll have to go down and blood trail that deer. You'll go down and you'll blood trail that deer. It might take 30 minutes. You might be 30 minutes in the pitch black dark blood trailing that deer. But then guess what? You'll find your deer. You'll drive it back to the truck. You'll overcome so much. And then when you pull out onto the road and the game warden is there waiting on you, and he says, oh, you found your deer. He'd been waiting there for you the whole time. Well, that's a true story. That happened to me. Yes, sir, I found my deer. And he, he heard me shoot and knew I was in there. and was just going to check me out. It was a great experience. Everything was okay. I had a good legal buck. I'd found my deer, and the whole time I had a guy watching out for me, and I, I really appreciated that. So I want that for you. I want you to find your place. I want you to be able to overcome any fear and apprehension. You don't need me, okay, to take you out and show you the way. You have all the tools that you need, and I'm here to help you with the information that you have and uh, that I have, and I'll gladly give it to you. Again, if you're interested in a copy, of my book, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman, go to Pat's Pawn and Gun in uh, Leesburg, Florida. Click on Publications. It'll come up. I won't mention it again until we reach 900 subscribers. Thanks, Jared, for the great gift. I really appreciate it. And send your questions and comments. Just comment in the uh, little comment section below. If you want to ask me questions, ask me questions in the comment section below. I was going to show you my muzzle loading rifle. This is a, uh, a Ruger M7750. The 50 just means it's a 50 caliber. I have it fitted with a, uh, a Redfield scope. It's a good scope. I like it. It looks like a bolt gun, but it, it is indeed a muzzleloader rifle. And uh, I bought it to hunt with it one day a year. In fact, that's what I did this year. One, that's what I got one day a year this year. So, okay, so that's uh, this week's video. And um, I'll be going back to Gothi. I've got a plan. Um, I had an idea that uh, deer are holding up in a big heavy swamp. I have not seen any deer in the palmetto flat and pines that I've been hunting so I'm going back to the swamp and uh, I'm going to try uh, my hand at hunting the edge and uh, I've only got one day. I'll get a quota permit for three days and uh, I'm going to go only on one of those days. So um, Good luck, and we'll talk to you guys soon. See ya. Bye.